guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is another bag review. Yay! Yes, the star of today's show is my Celine mini belt bag. Confession guys, I haven't used this all that much. Nope, not often at all, but I'll try my best. If you've had this on your wish list for a while and you've been mulling over it and you're unsure yet as to whether or not to pull the trigger, or if you just like listening to people justify why they spend their hard-earned cash on items that simply hold other items, then you're in for a treat. Because I'm going to be sharing with you all the things that I wish I knew before I bought the bag and more. So there's the basic things like sizing, price, wear and tear, quality, leather, and then there's the juicy details like the number of stitches in the bag, the make and model of the machine that was used to construct the bag. Actually, no, I don't know that information and I can't share that with you. If you're new around here, hello, I'm new around here too. My name is Virginia. I'm a lawyer by day. I'm a blogger by night, but by both day and night, I am a bag lover. So let's get this show on the road. <laughs> I love a handbag review. I've written a ton of them on my blog and I think they're one of my favorite things to watch on YouTube because I love listening to the reasons why people liked or didn't like a particular bag. And I watch them even about bags that I'm not particularly interested in and I've even used them to sort of check bags off my wish list. I've used them to even add bags to my wish list. But obviously you're watching this because you're a discerning shopper and you're not just gonna walk into a store and spend your hard earned cash just like that. You wanna hear the reasons why something might've worked. You wanna hear from somebody who's had a chance to use the bag. Because seriously, when you're in the store, the lighting is amazing. The sales assistants are so nice to you. They're offering you water. They're offering you snacks. There's plush leather seating. It's just, it's like a wonderland. And who can make a rational decision in that environment? And so well done you for doing a bit of research. Okay, so let's talk about sizing and let me just introduce you to my bag properly and share with you the exact version that I have. So I've got the mini sized belt bag in the black grained calf skin. And contrary to the dictionary definition of the word mini, mini is actually the largest size on offer. And so it goes mini and then the next size down is micro, then nano and the newly introduced Pico version, which is the smallest version on offer. Now, when I met the Pico in store for the first time, I did have a little bit of a giggle at it because it was just so teensy tiny in comparison to my mini size. Aww. Even though the Pico size is really teensy tiny, it's still not like one of those stupidly small micro bags that can only hold a credit card, say. Like, it's still a functional bag. You can still pop a phone in there. And I think across all of the sizes of the bag, it is a very functional bag thanks to the design. And it's just a very classic and minimal design. And so depending on what you want from your bag will obviously dictate the size that you will ultimately get. The reason why I went for the mini size is because I wanted to use it as a work bag. I didn't want capacity to be an issue. I wanted to be able to fit all my crap in there to take to and from the office with me. I'll show you later on in this video of what fits and how I pack my bag typically for a day of working in the office. Now, this mini size bag has a strap like so that you can wear on your shoulder. Can't wear it as a crossbody, it's too short for that purpose. And it also has the top handle. If you go one size down to the micro size, you can actually wear that as a crossbody. It's got a longer strap. Same with the Nano and same with the Pico. Aww. So the mini size is the only one that you can't wear as a crossbody. It only sits on the shoulder. And all of them obviously have of the top handle handle. So the design of the bag is quite simple. So it basically has a flat closure here that normally sits under the belt. That's how they display it in store. I think that's how it's meant to be when it's sort of in its resting position. And it's called the belt bag because it's got this belt detail here, not because you can wear it as a belt bag. Although that's not a bad look. Anyway, so it's got this flap closure. Underneath it hooks into sort of a metal closure, like so. So you can see there, that just hooks in here. And when you open the bag, it really is just one large pocket. So right now I've got a bag liner in there, which I will remove. 
and I will share with you the bag liner that I use when it comes to the what's in my bag, packing my bag portion of the video. But basically, as you can see, it is just a large chasm for you to create chaos, house all of those receipts and create a little bit of a mess. There's an internal flat pocket, which I use to sort of hold like my card holder and things like that. And there's also an external zip pocket here, which fits my phone. And so when I'm out and about and when I'm wearing clothes that don't have pockets, I will pop my phone in here and it makes it quite easy access. Now price wise, I will pop all of the prices as at January 2022 on the screen right here. So let's talk wear and tear. So I got this bag in 2019, about three years ago, and it was a push present because it was a bit of a disaster zone back then. But the bag still looks new. And I think it comes down to the fact that it, it's made of this grained calfskin and this stuff is really good quality. Grained calfskin leather can be best described as like a textured leather with a matte finish. So in comparison to say Saffiano leather, which is the leather that Prada uses, that is sort of like a heat stamped leather with a coating on top. That's why it's got that shiny finish. And that stuff is really durable. This is probably a step below that. It doesn't have that shine. It's still durable. And thanks to the texture, scratches don't show up as easily. Aside from the trend based special edition releases that they do have from time to time, the default version of the bag comes in the grained calfskin and so this is the leather that you will see when you go into the store to have a bit of a browse. Now the mini size that I have um, has the four studs at the base which helps to preserve the bag. I do pop this bag on the floor when I'm in the office because it's carpet and I don't particularly baby my bags though I don't pop it on the ground when I'm waiting at the train station or on concrete or anything like that because I don't abuse my bags. Don't abuse your bags, people. Now, when it comes to day-to-day -day use, it's probably worth noting that the flap closure does take a little bit of getting used to. So it's not like a one-handed type mechanism. You've got to use both hands when you need to access the interior of your bag. And so that's something worth noting. If that's not something that you're keen on, then that'll probably annoy you with time. For me, I love it, so I'm willing to accept that. There's also a top zipper that just sits under the flap. But I don't typically use this, but if security is an issue for you, then at least you know that it's there. It just simply zips up like so. Keeping all of your belongings nice and secure. The bag is an old Celine design. So it was introduced to the line of bags in 2014 when Phoebe Fillo was still the creative director. Although by the time I bought this bag, she had already left. I think it was only about six months. And so unfortunately, I don't have the accent over the E because that was removed, unfortunately. And I'll be honest, guys, it was something that I really had to come to terms with being such a Philo fan. I didn't like how the accent on the E was removed at the time, but I've since come to terms with it because thank goodness, Heidi didn't remove all of the Phoebe Philo design bags and he's kept most of them. Fingers crossed this one sticks around too because it is such a beautiful bag. Now, one thing to note about this bag is that it doesn't fit a 13 inch laptop. Now, at the time that I bought the bag, I was at a stage of work where I had my own office. I was logging on every day with the desktop computer that was in the office. And when I needed to work remotely from home, I would just log on using my personal computer. When laptops started getting introduced, I would hold my laptop separately in its case and carry this bag. That could only last for so long. I've since got myself several tote bags and this is the bag that I will use when I'm not cutting a laptop with me to and from the office or when I just want to change and I'm happy to sort of hold it externally. So that's an important thing to know. It doesn't fit a laptop. It fits a lot of other things though, which I will share with you right now. So before I show you how I pack my bag, I'm just going to take the opportunity to illustrate the 13 inch laptop conundrum. So I've got my old MacBook here, which is 13 inches, and it looks like it fits comfortably, but when it comes to closing the bag, it doesn't close, it's, it sits too high. And so that rules the bag out for being used as a laptop, unfortunately. Okay, so going from largest item to smallest item, going to start off with my iPad Pro with the case. This has the keyboard in it and so it's quite bulky. My Louis Vuitton desk agenda. My makeup pouch. 
my reading glasses, my card holder, my keys, and my AirPods. Okay, I would say that's the bag at capacity and it just closes like that. As you can see there, everything is quite neat and tidy. I've just popped in my small items just in the main part of the bag, um, but I don't envisage having too much trouble needing to find them when I do need them because everything is quite, because everything is quite neat and tidy. I'm going to show you how I would pack the bag using a bag liner. So this is the bag liner that I have. I bought it from Etsy and I will link it below. And so I will use the same item. So I've got here the iPad Pro again with the keyboard case, my desk agenda, my makeup pouch, my reading glasses, which I will pop in here, my card holder, my keys, and my AirPods, which I'll pop in the side pouch. And I will now insert it into my bag, like so. There we go, everything is all sort of compartmentalized, as you can see. Um, my reading glasses and my AirPods are just sort of in a case so I can easily reach for them. And the bag just closes like so. Now, at the time that I bought the bag, I wasn't a bag liner type person, but I've since been converted in the last couple of years. And I would recommend that you consider getting a bag liner, particularly with bags that have a larger capacity, because not only does it keep things neat and tidy, it also works to protect the lining of your actual bag. And so I will link that one below. So thank you so much for watching guys. If you like this video and you want to see more bag reviews from me, then be sure to like this video just so that I know that that is something that you want to see. If you have any questions, then please leave them in the comment section and I will get to them when I can. I'll also link all of the things that I featured below in the description bar so that you can click and explore and shop. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.